Hello, I am Stephanie Sage, host of the Stephanie Sage Show, and today I have the wonderful Dr. Beverly Pell. She is the founder of Smart Digital Kids, where she likes to empower parents to raise smart kids in a digital world. She inspires parents to raise kids who use tech wisely. So happy to have you on my show today. Thanks, happy to be here. Yeah, so much fun. And you're happy to be going live yes. in person. Yes, said. yes. Love it. Yeah, StreamYard, right? Yeah. Oh, love it. Yeah, love I love technology. StreamYard. It is so easy. I mean, it's basically like Zoom. Right. But then it records. You can just do record the audio if you want a true podcast. Right recording and then of course the video yeah i love yeah. it i've only done it a couple of times but yeah it works really well yeah love and it going live on, like it's going live on zoom virtually too so um tell us a little bit about your background how did you get into uh teaching parents to be tech savvy well um way back when i was a little itty bitty baby <laughs> you don't hear everything but when i was nine you know my dad was in data processing so computers back in the 60s, 70s, that was his thing. Like oh, he used to take up a whole warehouse, yet alone just one room, right? And now it's in our pocket. Yeah, and it's more powerful than that big room computer. I would go to his work and just try to ask all kinds of questions like, this is a computer, what is this, what is this? And then it was in our home. So we're one of the few in the 70s mm -hmm. that had a computer and I was playing games uh -huh. on it and everything. So I kind of grew up What, what did it look like? I did, it was, did not have a computer. It was like C prompt, it was just green and it was just the big um, the monitor. Color, like a orange yes, color. yes, and the big black and this floppy disks and it was very cumbersome and it's nothing like what we have today and I just played Pac-Man you know I, I played the games um, so I, you know I was no different than kids today which love playing games and it passes the time um, but I was I miss my dad and I kind of thought wow you know computers are taking all of this time I wish he spent more time with me so I kind of thought okay forget computers they're sucking everybody's time away even back then Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I'll never do anything with, with computers. I became a teacher and face-to-face -face and very inter interactive with, mm -hmm. you know, a human profession. Yeah. I love people. And then, um, lo and behold, I got into the classroom in the 90s, and they had these big disks mm -hmm. that were like, um, I forget what they were called, but they were the first laser disks huh. you could put in a VCR, but it's not a VCR. It was a DVR. Yeah. So it was a DVR. Yeah, because yeah. teachers might have only had, they were expensive. Mm -hmm. And it was a laser, like I could watch 1984s. I was yes. a senior literature teacher, and we watched 1984, and sort of like, like mm -hmm. racing over some of the parts in that movie that's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. I would just pick out scenes that with and just with a laser, mm -hmm. click the, the little bar graph, and this was so Skip. progressive. <laughs> yeah, this is 30 years ago, so it was so yeah. progressive. Yeah, I could choose, instead of the VCR, right, you would like fast forward, fast forward, mm -hmm. oh, they're having, you know, fast. And you're like going through so it was so amazing so I found myself loving technology so uh, after um, just learning master's degree and and I just decided to go all the way with the, the PhD in education mm -hmm. leadership with a technology oh, okay gotcha. so because technology was entering the teaching world and mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to work with teachers mm -hmm. to integrate technology in the classroom so uh -huh. I kind of fell in love with it yeah and um, then the pandemic happened. I had a granddaughter born. It was so much fun. Is that your first one? That's my first Isn't one. The best of all oh worlds. My gosh, it was. It was. I was so lucky because my daughter had a chance to go back to work right away, and so which was, you know, she would come home, she would pump, and she'd give me, and I got to watch my granddaughter for like five or six months. Wow. Yeah, and it was enough time for me to go back, you know, 20 years ago, because my son was 19 or 20, and think, and kind of see the difference between, oh my gosh, you know, having a baby today in 2019, and then having a baby in 2020, um, I think he was born in 2001, yes, 2001. Mm -hmm. And it was so different because my phone, I felt like I had my have my phone all the time. It was on the, it was on my um, armchair when I was feeding her her bottle. It would go with me if I was on the deck and I'm like, wait, this is, this is not right. So um, I, I just one day thought, you know, I need to tame my tech. It's a little out of control because my attention is divided. <laughs> And so I thought about that and I did, I tried to break the habit. Mm -hmm. So I was in the habit of bringing my phone with me, being on it all the time, seven, eight, nine, who knows how many hours I was on it. Mm -hmm. But I was reading, watching, texting, notifications, mm -hmm. all that. So I made a conscious decision to not, mm -hmm. to not have it by me all the time. Yeah, and I think it's it, it a good variety to, to do because 
you know, it should be, well, we're in emergency services, so we have to have a cell phone, uh, yeah. even before all the iPhones came along. But you should really, I think, monitor that even as adults, because yeah. it can really zap your time, and you could be doing something like meditating, or watching a TV show, it's just something, and taking a walk. Quiet. Yeah, and you're not quiet. looking down while you're walking, you have to just leave. enjoy nature. Yeah, and I noticed that, so that was like week five or six, when I really felt like I did it. I did it. I tamed my tax. I think it's a like little addicting for the night. Totally. And so I, that's something I noticed is that getting on the deck and my phone was in the house. Like for the first time, I noticed the leaves and the breeze mm -hmm. and her. Aww. And I was rocking. Yeah, it was that's so sweet beautiful. It was like returning back to yeah. how it was pre iPhone, right? So mm -hmm. we got our iPhones like in 2000. We're actually in the moment, enjoying the moment. In the moment, in the moment. Right. In the moment which yeah. is how it should be with this newborn, especially as you're just Aww. getting to know the baby, right? Getting yeah. to know this precious human being so innocent so, and sweet yeah so it was good i just didn't want to have my attention divided and then when she mm -hmm. took a nap or she was uh very busy with whatever she's doing you know i would check it notifications right, right. real quick but then if she was cooing or looking at me or calling me mm -hmm. i just put it down and just let her know you know what you're important yeah i can just put that down yeah not so right now do you have what's your name grandmama 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 I know it's so much fun I, I, and speaking of being in the moment i think when you're a grandpa you're so much more in the moment because you're just focused on them you're not focused on all the other stuff you have to be doing or thinking about right. as a parent so right. i really cherish that yes that I do. time I do. so much and they just will they start talking and crack you oh, up i know and, yeah she's three yeah. so she's just starting to dance oh, along yeah and just She's got so much energy. Her so little fun. personality. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The no and the independence. Yeah. And it's fun. It's yeah. so funny because my son-in-law is such a good, he's so involved and he's just really on her level all the time. And he always tells me, she's kind of in the no thing right now. <laughs> you know, kind of warning me. Yeah. She's a little stubborn. I'm like, no, oh, I've been there three times. You know, I've been there. And he's just so patient and wonderful. Oh, so. that's good. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 So then um, you decided to get into, when did you start your own? Uh, when so, did you found your business? So really 2020, so okay. mid-2020. mid, mid 2020, So when it happened in March, I was actually working for an architect down here in mm -hmm. Kansas City um, as a marketing coordinator because oh. I, you know, I graduated my PhD in 2018. I looked for about a year for a professorship mm -hmm. and I couldn't find anything. I looked across the United States. Wow. I know. So nobody's really retiring and I, I, I'm in a specific niche, which is philosophy mm -hmm. of education. Okay. So um, I just couldn't find anything. So I was kind of just taking a break and it was just a good time for me to reflect. Mm -hmm. on what I want to do and who I want to help and where I want to be. Kind of like and, joke, what I want to be when I grow up. Exactly. Yeah. That's, like, that's, that's, how, was. Was. that's how it was. I was like graduating from college, fresh out of college. Now what, right? And um, I had homeschooled my kids beforehand. Mm -hmm. So I've always been teaching, but when you go from homeschooling for 15 years and then... I can't even imagine. I would never like, trust myself. Really? Uh, it was difficult. You're a teacher, though. I was a teacher. Yeah. So that definitely uh, mm -hmm. that made a big difference. However, it's still you know, going from teaching 200 kids in California is where I started uh -huh. to two kids. And yeah. so it was difficult, but I, I had to sh shift gears and come out of the comfort of the home and just reading and studying and uh -huh. going through school again with both of them and having fun and just being able to control it to the classroom teaching at KU. So I taught yeah. education students at KU. I got to the University of Kansas. I don't know how far your, your, mm -hmm. your audience is, but the University of Kansas. And it kind of helped me get back out of my shell. And then the pandemic happened and I felt this call because my friends who are in education across again the United mm -hmm. States um, and my daughter and and just everyone right especially going from the classroom mm -hmm. well I felt bad for the parents of my daughter like right? they're trying to work from home and you know how that is so you get on your computer or phone your kids are buggy and then you're trying to be a teacher to them you know that so I dealt with so oh, I don't know it was and I just I cried for them. You know I didn't know what to do. I tried to talk to as many as I could. So again, it was like, should I go to schools and help teachers because I taught online? People as well. could have so, uh, hired you to least. They yeah, could have, and I'm here right. holding my baby. Yeah, well, yeah, you are quite you <laughs> my grandbaby, yeah, my grandbaby. So yeah, I just kind of like paused, and it was it was mayhem, right? It was, and I just paused. I think a lot of people paused and really mm -hmm. uh, did some soul searching about how they want yeah. to spend their time, what do they want to do. I mean, there was some good things. Out of yes, that. for sure, and I think it's all happening. It's helping us, um, yeah, get in touch with what we need and and yeah mm -hmm. your purpose and and our families like what our kids need and how the role we play are we spend enough time with them yeah and and yeah. in our relationship with technology our mm -hmm. kids relationship with technology 
uh, our relationship as a family, uh, as our adults. And so that's kind of what happened is my self-awareness in August of this 2020, I realized, hey, when I began the Tame Your Tech, so I love that catchy phrase. And um, when I did some research, I'm like, how, do I, how can I be a good grandparent raising this little mm-hmm. kid when she comes around to visit? Right. And then my own um, kids. Now, when I raised my kids homeschooling, because of my background in uh, ed- um computers and my father, I knew the power of computers. Mm -hmm. I knew how it was this, this dynamic thing that there's messages on it. And then playing computer games in your house was amazing. You know, you had to go to the arcade with your roll of quarters. Yeah. This was like, (laughs) let's do it again. (laughs) So in a way that that whole feeling of the power of technology in your house was amazing. And I knew, so when my kids were born and I was a writer, so I was always on my computer, they were watching me, but there were games that we could play Mm -hmm. and they wanted to play those games. Like, 18 months, get that mouse and they learn fast, fast, really. And I just saw the power of that. So I just delayed it. I said, if you want to play like mommy on the computer, Mm -hmm. you just have to control your body. Uh And that was potty training. That was just something I I said, you have to potty train before you. It is. is, But how how is that (laughs) going to happen? I ride. They're like, wait, I give an iPad at 14 months. How is this going to happen? But it it worked for me because I wanted to teach them the power of technology Mm -hmm. that you can just dive into it. And the time goes by. Um, And, and, you know, we can talk more Mm -hmm. about what, what it's doing today to some teenagers and young adults. Um, They're losing touch with their bodies and how they're feeling mentally. Well, and I think think it's a lack of, um, what I have heard about is um, people, the lack of communication skills one on one. Like, there are actually, I've heard stories from parents where they have kids that are like uh, middle school or high school, and they get to, like, let's say a, a fast food restaurant, and they get up to order, and they'll stand there and they're afraid to actually order for themselves. Right, right. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So they'll, they'll look at their parent to say, tell the order taker what they want. Right. Is that true? Right. I mean, oh, like, it, is. It, it really is. And that's like another thing because of my background and, and this is part of the business. I thought, you know, I need to talk to parents to help them see because mm-hmm. I think parents don't think about that. And we, as I think, um, you know, we, we hear helicopter parents or now they call them drone parents. Oh, I haven't heard that. <laughs> <laughs> is that funny? It I might have been power out to where I heard it. But yeah, now we have drone parents. Um, I, I, you know, I was guilty of doing some of that too. Mm-hmm. I say guilty because we feel bad. Like, wait, did I enable my child too much to not live in this world? Well, I tell my um, kids, it's you do your best. It's all you can do. Come talk to me if you've raised your kids. As long as you do your best, you try. You do. You, you do. do. And I think we all question that, which is healthy to reflect on that. And we can be honest with our mm-hmm. kids. Like maybe I'm helping you too much. And I yeah. remember they have, son, to fall. they have to learn. They do. And that, but exactly what you're saying, like talking to an adult that they don't know face to face. And I told my son, I said, no, you have to call and, and get your own doctor's appointment. And he was either 17 or 18 and you schedule your doctor's appointment. He's like, no, no. I'm like, you do it. I'll be right here. He's at the top of the stairs. He's like, he's like pacing. He's like, uh, yeah, Dylan, help. Uh, and he's like telling his uh, birthday. And I could tell he was so nervous. And then afterwards, I thought, I didn't tell him they could actually do it online. You know, I didn't tell him that he could like do it all without talking. But that's true. Like we don't, we we just do things now. All of us online. You can make the appointments. You can do this so that one on one, that face to face talking. They have an option not to, and all of us are that. I way. think it's great for extroverts, maybe. That, yeah. But then I know, like a lot of people who are like the super duper extroverts were probably going insane in twenty twenty. They were. I'm like a combination. Yeah, like I yeah, can be yeah. kind of introverted in big events or something, but I'm yeah. being really outgoing. But yeah. the people that are one or the other are probably oh, yeah. really feeling. They did. I don't know. They did. Either in their place or they did. Yeah, because I worked for uh, this architect and he's more outgoing and, and he couldn't wait to get yeah. back in the office. And I was yeah. like, can I work from home? <laughs> <laughs> because I was in marketing, right? And yeah. I just had, I just need a computer and mm-hmm. Zoom and yeah. um, keep in touch that way. But they're like, no, we missed you in the office, which made me feel great, yeah. of course. But yeah, that I'm kind of like you, that extrovert, uh, yeah. introvert. Um, and even the introverts, I think, that had, that had to stay home um, were antsy. And they yeah. want to get because introverts want to get out as well. Yeah, they that's just get true drained, too. right? They just yeah. get drained. And mm-hmm. um, so I think we all kind of felt that. Um, and the kids, I think that was so wonderful about technologies, the kids could stay 
yeah. in control or stay um, connected to their friends. Mm -hmm. And that's where, where technology is really a gift. Yeah. But then you hear about all the rising suicides and depression among kids. And I think, too, a lot of times with social media, like, look, in our day, you know, you could have people gossip, but it didn't travel so fast because you had to right. actually whisper it in somebody's yes. ear or whatever, tell yes. them the friends. But now something can go viral in yeah. seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of, you know, talk about body image, especially for girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, traditionally I've always struggled with that. Right. And so now you've got people, shop, you know, photoshopping, everybody looks perfect, or you think you're, you have these perceptions, everybody else's life is exactly. so exciting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't really know because yeah. it could be just all an illusion, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so uh, do you think that's contributed to people just feeling like, Maybe they aren't quite as good out on social media. They're not as pop popular. It's like transcended yeah. from the classroom oh, to your yeah. neighborhood to yeah. online, which is a much bigger For uh, sure. space, to be sure. Yeah, it's really complicated because I think maybe the extroverts or some other people, I mean, not, I don't want to put yeah, the extrovert should, yeah, introvert, sure. but there are, if you're extroverted offline, I think you tend to be extroverted online, mm -hmm. you know, so you're going to be extroverted anyway. But if you're creative, it seems like we're moving into a creator economy where mm -hmm. if you just take the social media channels and you're comfortable speaking in front of a camera mm -hmm. and you're funny, silly, whatever, just let the camera roll and you're, yeah. you're you and entertaining because a lot of extroverts are, mm -hmm. um, it's working. Okay. And they, they, they use the filters. They use the funny sounds. Mm -hmm. They use the technology to uh to entertain and to to and some of them are making money and, yeah. and they have their own show whereas some of the quieter ones do a lot of consuming they they watch it like tv mm -hmm. um and they have their favorite um comedians or influencers mm -hmm. or gamers or um but some of the younger girls mm -hmm. right that is where it starts when they get a phone and the average age now they're saying is between nine and ten where kids will get their first uh, smartphone, mm -hmm. uh, internet-enabled device, where and sometimes it's an iPad or or a tablet where they can actually. Even my grandkids know they can they can call on their iPad. Exactly. So yeah, they that can didn't take a long time. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't have to be a small mm -hmm. uh, screen, and they they don't come to it understanding right away that this girl has a filter, mm -hmm. one or two filters on her she's just really beautiful i didn't you know wow her makeup is perfect and uh -huh. she doesn't sometimes they don't realize right. the filters because they don't know how to get around it they uh -huh. don't realize it and i think that's one of the things i, I have to teach with. me that i work with parents <laughs> yeah i work that's what i teach parents yeah. to teach how many do you do that oh i know my yeah. sister said the same thing she cracks me up because <laughs> she's she she has um one son and he's 16 now and mm -hmm. she's done pretty well about delaying um the social media mm -hmm. because she doesn't do it well, okay. So she's kind of like, I don't know what to do about that. And she knew it was coming, yeah. but he, she delayed the smartphone as well mm -hmm. with him um, until teenage years. And I think that that's really wise mm -hmm. to delay that because you think even into teenagers, I do. Cause and it does come in handy. I will say being divorced. I did actually, my kids didn't. Well, I think my daughter had a flip phone. And yeah. I got divorced. yeah. But sometimes just what it eliminates, you don't have to always communicate with your ex and depending on the situation, whether that's good or bad, your kids can communicate. Yeah. So, yes. so that's one situation I can totally get. Yeah. But yeah, and you know, it's still pretty think, young. Yeah. It, it is young. And I think um I think smartphones like lately this I think the the number one reason parents give uh, kids their first phone is is when they go to the bus stop when yeah. it's time to walk to the bus stop uh -huh. and take the bus yeah. so which is age nine usually fourth grade they're kind mm -hmm. of independent and so the parents are like i want you to have this phone right. and often right. they'll be like i have an iphone here's an iphone because we're going to keep in touch and there's um filters you can use and you can mm -hmm. research block out apps. Yeah. yeah um but they have good phones now um do you they don't just sell the yeah. age appropriate phones? They do. Like one like of them, this Gab, age group of phones. Yeah, one of them is called Gab mm -hmm. uh, phone, which looks like a smartphone mm -hmm. and has GPS and the phone. The bare um, essentials. The bare essentials, mm -hmm. but no internet. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they can't Ooh, download internet. apps. Yeah, they can't download apps. Mm -hmm. And um, and yet they have their they have their texting. Mm -hmm. uh, phone um what is it called the camera mm -hmm. is on there gps appearance can get them, and it looks like a smartphone mm -hmm. so it looks like it so you can download games maybe no, no they probably can't no even no yeah because there's no internet so then they probably have an ipad or yeah yeah or the computer, the computer. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's just a matter of what a family wants to do if they mm -hmm. want to just slow the whole internet enabled device 
um, mm -hmm. that's something to think about. There are phones that um, are like, you know, everything except the internet because the yeah. internet just, it gets in the way. Well, and there's a lot of dangers <laughs> on the internet. I mean, there's, I mean, uh, human, you know, sex trafficking is huge. Right. And I think it's hard for maybe a 10 year old to understand that they want to get on play was or Roblox or all right. these other games yeah. that they think it's just another 10 year old, but yeah. it could be an adult creativity. Yeah. I mean, for them to process, it's, they probably shouldn't even have to even be thinking like that. Right. It's just, you know, right. But the world you know, we live in, right. Um, so. which is super important. And that's, you know, part of, um, what I teach parents with communication. So when I work with parents, I talk about self-awareness, which mm -hmm. we already talked about, like how are we using our devices? And then I talk about communication and how it leads to connection. So before they connect online mm -hmm. with other people, connect with your kids when they're young, when mm -hmm. they're six, seven, eight. And we did that. So when we had our iPhones before our kids were mm -hmm. teens, we would research with them. So we would download a funny game like back, I don't know if you remember, but back they used to have that bubble game where they try to yeah. pop the bubbles as fast mm -hmm. as they can. That was a, that it was fun. So we would look through the games and have as many apps as they do now. Mm -hmm. But we together would look at the apps. I would get at the app store and show them the process. It was always us. I never had my, my credit card on there yeah. that they could get into. Mm -hmm. So we taught them how to research on the internet. Mm -hmm. We taught them how to use Safari. We taught them and we talked about it. And, mm -hmm. and I remember my son being seven or eight and he had seen other kids at school who mm -hmm. brought their iTouch, whatever yeah. Wi-Fi could go on the internet. And he was taking us to a site where this lady was doing something weird <laughs> yeah. with chopping a watermelon in half with her anatomy. And I'm just like, <laughs> Wow. Right. It. it was like, okay, no, this yeah, is not my favorite. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but just, you know, yeah. typical, funny, silly. Yeah. Isn't this funny? I'm like, well, to some people maybe, but eh. so talking, yeah. just talking about that, you know, this is kind of what we're, you're going to see all kinds yeah. of information on here. And it's just, where do you want to spend your time? Yeah. And teaching our kids at a very early age that you're going to see that you're going to see plenty of that. But how much of that do you want to consume? Mm -hmm. How much of that do you want to spend your time mm -hmm. on that? Because if you do look at that and we're all laughing at it, mm -hmm. then there's an algorithm there. Uh -huh. Wherever you are on any social media platform or the Internet mm -hmm. or YouTube, Google, you name it, any search engine, they're going to bring up more images and more videos that you laugh at. Right. It follows everything yeah. you do. Because we want to laugh. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the Internet that I use is just funny. Mm -hmm. YouTube, I just search for funny, funny, funny because mm -hmm. I need to laugh. Yeah. And um, they'll just whatever you linger on. The algorithm behind it is the science behind well, it. It starts swaying. Sending you more of that more of that. Right. It's that stuff you don't mm -hmm. want, so you don't spend very much time there, right? Exactly. Don't click on it. But we can't help it. Kids are curious and they want to know everything. Kids are just like, I want to know everything mm -hmm. until they start knowing everything and they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with that. I don't right. know what to do with that. And it makes them feel a certain way and they don't know what to do with the feeling. So right. if you don't talk to them at a very early age. And we talk about strangers offline, right? Mm -hmm. So if, you run into something at the bus stop. stranger at the bus stop and yeah, if you feel yard. unsafe, you know, you go to where you're safe. If it make you feel uncomfortable, they say something to you. Because online it's easier to hide. You can be anything you want to be, I guess. It, is. Right? It, it can be. And I think, you know, some of the, like you were talking about, some of the predators um, will go very slow. Mm -hmm. Posing as a young kid or the mm -hmm. same age, they'll ask right away and they'll say, lying, mm -hmm. lying, I'm a 12 year old. How old are you? And mm -hmm. they'll kind of, they know 12 year old psyche. So they'll mm -hmm. pretend and they'll feed that 12 year old exactly what they've heard, seen. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're on the same level. Mm -hmm. And then slowly, well, you know, what do you, what kind of pajamas do you wear at night? I mean, it just, I'm not kidding. It probably, yeah. I mean, stories yeah. that I've heard that seem so innocent, you know, I like this and, and just slowly getting in. How do you teach your kids? Like, like flags, the line. maybe. Yeah. You know, what line. things are, what, yeah, what line do you cross? What Even line? if it is a 12 year old, what, what do they care? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, so so all ages and all ages. And I think that that's why communication with our kids mm -hmm. at a very early age is so important. Like um, adult images mm -hmm. there, you know, we see adult images. We're adults. We know right away what that is. Mm -hmm. And we have a choice whether we want to look or not. However, younger kids shouldn't even be looking at that. Right. That's why they're adult, right? Mm -hmm. These kids aren't adult. And when they see it, it, whoa, why is that person, why does that person not have clothes on? You know, and whoa, yeah. what is that? Oh, 
whoa, you know, and they yeah. just have all these questions and they just, and, and, and they want to talk about it. <laughs> and so on the other side of the screen, if they meet someone and they're on a game and somebody wants to say, Hey, have you seen this? And oh my goodness. So kids are curious. They want to talk and it doesn't matter if they're offline or online uh -huh. and you would rather have your kids talking to you and asking right. you questions as a parent or a grandparent or a, you know, caregiver that they're safe in your home than online. Right. Where, but here's the thing I say to parents is kids are going to look for attention mm -hmm. in any way and with anyone. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if you're just having them be wiser for, I mean, they have to be, I mean, you don't want to, I tell them some of the horrible details, what happens to kids. No. Um, but you, they need to be wise and not naive. As naive Definitely. They need to be informed. Mm -hmm. And I tell parents that you are the wise one. So like, you know, my company, Smart Digital Kids, mm -hmm. like you were saying, kids are smart today. They are smart, but we need to teach them to grow from smart informational mm -hmm. age we're in to wisdom. Well, yeah, just because you're smart doesn't mean you have a really great ability to use discernment. Exactly. You can be, you still be gullible. Exactly. Or just uh, trusting. Maybe not very intuitive, you're too trusting. Too I mean, trusting. so it isn't always mm -hmm. your level of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Street smarts can go a long way. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, bad and some of these kids that are so like, they take to technology while watching other adults. So some people like parents are like, oh, these kids these days, I can't, I can't keep up. It's like they're born knowing how to do this. No, they're not. They just have more time and they're sitting there watching whoever, a teacher, a parent, their older brother and sister, and they learn. It seems like they like, they, well, they're like yeah, they're like they, language. They, they, they can learn multiple languages. Like, exactly. they're, but the younger you are, the more your brain works. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. you know, computer and coding even is a language. Mm -hmm. So uh, this whole idea of, uh, yeah, connecting friends, mm -hmm. snaps, you know, they, they watch it. They get it. And so the minute they... They're on it. They'll learn it quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you also may learn it quickly, but you also have to go to work and you have to put the baby to bed. So mm -hmm. here's your nine-year-old just mm -hmm. doing so great and so fast. And I can't keep up. And what is he watching on YouTube now? And and you just throw your hands up and you're exhausted and you're like, oh, I hope he's I I I hope he's not in you know yeah. where he shouldn't be going. But then we were talking before that we start went live, and then you mentioned that reel that went. Um, viral on Instagram, yes. but I was amazed at some of the comments that you were reading that the kids were like, oh, I think yeah. I got my phone to at too young of an age, so I'm thinking maybe some of the younger ones are more wise because they've seen um, some of the not so positive ill effects that social media, phones, mm -hmm. internet can bring. It's just the health of balance, sure. right? Yeah, I really felt lucky. Um, like I was saying, there's that algorithm, right? And I would love kids to see this and parents to understand that um, when kids post on Instagram, especially, they're looking for that heart. They're looking for that attention. The like. They're looking yeah. for the light. They want to be noticed, seen, and, and affirmed. And if they don't right away get that, they take it down. And that doesn't, that doesn't help anything. Mm -hmm. And I teach them there's an algorithm I keep making content hoping that the algorithm will push it out there mm -hmm. because many times the algorithm won't even push it out. It's not that I didn't make a good video. I think my video is pretty good. But well, if you're not out there like me, I don't get out there and I'm not, I don't spend hours a day liking other people's stuff. I'm just busy. Right. So like if I put stuff out, it's not going to get seen as much as somebody is always out there. So oh, you have to yeah. understand that. So mm -hmm. I just always mm -hmm. take it personally. It's like, oh, oh we got five likes. Right. I mean, you know, because I know I'm not out there myself. I just yeah. don't want to spend the time doing it. They're exactly. Oh, but do so they, I'm the yeah, sure they understand that. And but well, it's just that, you know, not always, you know? not always. And I think that if we could explain that, that there is a computer against you mm -hmm. and you don't have full control, if right. your friends will see this darling, well, why didn't so-and-so like my, you know, she must not like me. No, she never saw it. Right. Because there's billions of posts mm -hmm. and she might've missed it. It's not that she went. So yeah. I feel very lucky that this algorithm mm -hmm. on Instagram pushed it out and mm -hmm. 1.5 or 1.6 wow. views, right? Mm -hmm. million That's views. That's crazy. I know. I was just glad because. So why do like, you think that happened? What was the yeah. main topic of it? Um, so okay. it was me um, mm -hmm. just doing a voiceover because that's like reels are like TikToks, right? Mm -hmm. They're, it's a similar thing. And on Instagram, you can do like not more than 60 seconds. I think video. so, yeah. yeah. And, but the shorter, the better. Anyway, uh -huh. especially okay. if it's funny. And I used a voiceover 
um, of Gary Vaynerchuk. So if you know um, marketing, he's the king of marketing uh -huh. and digital marketing. And um, he was doing something funny like, oh, you know, you asked a very good question. Um, and it's very, the answer is very deep and the answer is no. And so I just put like, can I just gave my kid a phone? Um, I want to take it back. You know, can I just take it back? And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, so it's on there. It's, um, yeah, Dr. Beverly Pell, you can go look oh, on my, my Instagram. And it was, I thought it was super funny. And, and because it was pushed out by the algorithm, mm -hmm. um, yeah, 44,000 likes. Oh, my gosh. I know. I'm like, okay, maybe. Your phone's like going up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Every morning, every morning, I'm like, okay, now I get 100. I think it maxes out at 100. 100 likes and then follows and all this. And I'm like, okay, good. Mm -hmm. I tried really hard to respond to every, every comment. And it took about a month. So it was a month and then finally slowed down. I'm like, okay, slow down. <laughs> you know, but, but hopefully it touched the the people mm -hmm. that it needed to get right, in front exactly. of and a thousand comments, almost a thousand comments. And like you were saying, it was That's like, a lot of comments. It was so many comments. And let me tell you, when you get a lot of comments, there's going to be hate, right? Haters are out there and they're going to write negative things. I just don't understand the haters. What do you, you know, <laughs> just no comments. Because they disagree or they just want their two minutes of fame mm -hmm. and they're going to put something on there. And the first, like one of the greatest first comments was so good. I pinned it mm -hmm. at the top. So you can do that. Yeah. And they were like, almost 2000 likes to that one. And it was explaining that she got it in year seven and she's okay. from the UK. So it would be like seventh grade or sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And she said she, she wished she had gotten it later because mm -hmm. it distracted her and she thinks it should be later. And there were so many comments. Do you think about some baby laws on when kids take it phones? You know, you know <laughs> should be, I think <laughs> laws. Um, yeah. I wonder. That's the thing. It's really hard. Cause if we did that, it's kind of like censorship. Yeah. yeah right? well, I, I'm mm -hmm. totally don't like censorship. I know. And that's but the thing that was really when hard. You said that it made me think of that. Like, was that a day ever come? I know. Well, see, that's the thing like smoking, mm -hmm. you know, you can't just buy cigarettes at age 13. Well, shoot kids. Right? Practically in their car seats to like twelve, I like know. tiny people. Yeah, that's, like, like, yeah, that's yeah. so true. You can't even turn them around. <laughs> but yeah, I think that, like you were saying uh, about wisdom and about mm -hmm. these kids are maybe growing up a little bit wiser. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that. So the Generation Z are, are the kids that basically got their first right, phone. which is my son, like twenty six. Yes, mm -hmm. and my gr my girls are twenty six. They were the first generation to really have iPhones. Anyway. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And uh, because I homeschooled, mm -hmm. I managed to keep it off until you're going to get it for graduation, high school graduation. So they were like 17, 18 yeah. before they got their iPhone. So well, having me, right, I mean, having me as a teacher and an obnoxious mother, like <laughs> trying to warn them, let me tell you, you know, you can go anywhere, any library, any art show, any gallery, any peep show. <laughs> Any, you know, and, and it was just, I talk about it all the time. And because I did, my son, who's four years younger, he got his at 14. And, and this is important, too, that I would have done it differently. Um, when he was in high school, 14, his teachers communicated through Twitter. Mm -hmm. And so I fell in his baseball coach. And I felt like, mm -hmm. Should we get that the iPhone then? Should we get the? And we're like, well, he's kind of mature, mm -hmm. maybe. And I didn't think about it the way now. He's mm -hmm. twenty, he's gonna be twenty-one. Uh, seven years later, it seems like it's more. It's mm -hmm. e there's even more on it and okay. more pull to the dangers. So we watched him grow up with it and he and I talked about it like what are you seeing online? Should I give him Snapchat or not? And I did because it's like texting. Mm -hmm. They used it for texting. Now, can you go to the page where there's a bunch of reels and things to look at and yeah. TikToks? Yes. But he really, he was such a teacher to me because I would ask him like, why are you staying up so late? Like we had a rule. You cannot mm -hmm. take your phone in your bedroom. Yeah. You need to sleep. Really Don't get your phone. Right. Cause they're going to be watching YouTube. Well, they see the time. light when it comes on. Cause you get notifications. Oh, like I'll wake up at night and my, I'm like, Lighten up the bedroom, right. um, but then we keep our phones just because of our business. Right. So, but and when our kids they say small, it's bad, just the light. Is yeah. Small. So what I do is turn it. I turn it Upside over. Down. Yeah. And now that our kids are out of the house and on their own and stable, that I just turn it. I keep it out of my bedroom actually. Now. Yeah. Just um, so I'm a sensitive person. And I feel like I can hear the electricity, but I just keep it out. But my husband has it on his side. But learning from my son and just talking to him about what's out there and mm -hmm. what kids are doing. And wanting to have filters, wanting to like, don't game when you go home. I mean, I want you to do homework. I want you to do this. And it's just laughable. He's yeah. like, mom, kids age nine up, go home after school and just 
like Google Pornhub.com and they're doing sex ed. And I'm like, wait, ah, <laughs> my have times have changed. <laughs> I know times have changed. It's not the after school ABC movies that we Brady used to Bunch. watch. Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch. And Partridge and family. Yes. Was up and, in right? and it's not that anymore. The kids are home alone. And I was, I was home alone. My parents worked. My mom came home. She I know. Because we didn't have the right to do. You didn't have cartoons on 24 hours a day. We had Oprah. We had Oprah. Yeah, you would I mean, watch you had Oprah. Only certain things that you could, could watch. You yeah. didn't have your technology. Really and at all. I know. And now they do, and they they know how to get around filters, and they just and they have their phone. And phones often don't have the type of filters. There's ways around mm -hmm. there's ways around filters, and that's some of the stuff I mm -hmm. educate parents on too, like going through Google Maps. You can get online. So even though you think you or could you go to another search engine like like DuckDuckGo? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of other search engines hardly anybody knows about. Yeah. Because everybody just thinks Google. So right. I'm sure parents yeah, don't even, some don't even know there's a DuckDuckGo yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Out there. yeah. So there's so much to learn. It's so complex and I'm learning all the time mm -hmm. and, and I'm in this business. Well, because so. it's ever changing. Always. Week by hour, hour, day, week, mm -hmm. months, whatever. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah, I think about my grandkids. What's it going to be like when they're in high school? They're yeah. not having kids. I don't yeah, know. and and it's just to know that we're we're humans mm -hmm. first. That's something I say often. That we're humans. We're born into the world, and the technology's right beside us. But we have to stay human, and we have mm -hmm. to tame the machine. So taming something when it's tame, it's it, you control it. Mm -hmm. It's predictable. It's not going to surprise you. It doesn't harm you. Mm -hmm. We don't let a dog in our house when they're not tame. Mm -hmm. And like it, it's going to be angry and suddenly bite our kid. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't do that. We would crate him. We would mm -hmm. muzzle him. We would figure out how to deal with this thing mm -hmm. that's not tame. Um, if we tamed our tech, we would control it. Mm -hmm. We would. It would be predictable. And all the things that we can do, like put on uh, filters, like Bark is a good parental control mm -hmm. filter, and there's there's others mm -hmm. um, to feel in control of the tech. But we're really not. Mm -hmm. We're really not in the uh, in control of it if we're not continually asking our kids mm -hmm. where are you going on the internet mm -hmm. what are you doing are there loopholes are there crevices to get into mm -hmm. it because and I say that to parents too you know they say what's the best time it's like a big black hole of like constant supervision it is, and, and it's like a there are crevices there are it's like you're going up mountains and well then there's also I read about like the dark web well, uh, I don't know. I know web. nothing about yeah. it. I'm like, that sounds really scary to me. But yeah. you know, I have no interest. But then, no. I mean, no. I don't want to know about that. But then, and most you know. people don't. And yeah, most people but I just don't. Write about it. And it's it's there. It's there, and you know, it's nothing you, you have to go go through and uh -huh. see. Um, you need a special um, so kids network can't to get, get to it. it. Not no, you have to run it on a different server. Oh, okay, because so, I always, always yeah. like we got like, oh, it just sounds cool. Yeah, you, it, 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 yeah, it does. Especially if you're listening to police, you know, uh -huh. police and what they're searching to find oh, it. Okay. But yeah, it's, that's not easy. There's a lot of illegal. Too. It's okay. really illegal stuff okay. is on there, so no normal kid yeah. would want it. <laughs> you don't want your kid on there. No, 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 no. You don't really research that. You don't want to be on there. You can't. I'm, I've never been on there. I've never been on there, and that's one of those things that you know it's out there. It's just like Pornhub.com. You know it's out there, but I have told my kids when we talk about that, I, I say to them, I don't go there. I've never gone there. I know it exists, but I don't go there because I don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm super sensitive. It sticks in my mind. I'm one of those memories that we'll never forget. And I don't need to see those images. And so I just say it very frankly. You know, adults can do whatever they want, but small children who are not who are Googling this because they're curious and they're going to put boobs into the search engine. <laughs> they're going to hurt, but what is a butt? I want to see a butt. Okay. You'll see more than just a Wikipedia <laughs> yeah, that's scary. drawing that's of a butt. It is. That. It is. And I think, you know, in a way, rather than be afraid of it mm -hmm. and be afraid that our, our sweet, innocent child is going to be exposed to it, get to it before they see it. Mm -hmm, so sure. when they're six or seven, you know, there are books that are wonderful that you can sit down with your six year old, seven year old about your body. Mm -hmm. And so that's when it starts. I mean, sex ed is now starting at that's six, what I've heard. which is okay. Yeah. It's okay because kids are way into their bodies. They just mm -hmm. are. Cause our bodies, our bodies don't suddenly start feeling at age six or seven mm -hmm. or eight. We yeah. feel when we're two and three and we have these, these, these need these needs to be held and touched and caressed and loved, and we love ourselves. We kind of like grow out of that as people judge us and people mm -hmm. look at us and people are like, 
And I think as long as our parents love us and mm -hmm. accept us, are always there for us. And then we slowly break away and we look for friends. Mm -hmm. Our peers to do the same thing. Do you love me like mm -hmm. my, my mom does? Like, my, yeah, yeah, I love you. I'll look out for you. And that's normal and healthy. Mm -hmm. But on the, when you are entering a, an internet stage, age, you're going to see um, peers that you don't know, that the mm -hmm. kids don't know, that are saying, yes, right. I'll love you, listen to you, mm -hmm. hear you, which is super helpful. And my my daughters were on Tumblr. That was one of the, um, I'll show you how old they are. So yeah. <laughs> Tumblr was one of their first. Um, what was that? Was that like a Facebook? Or what? I think it's a blogging. I remember kind of. blogging. Yeah, no, it's more blogging, a lot of art and I'm writing. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's really artsy, actually. Oh. And they're still on it. They still uh -huh. do it a lot of anonymity, mm -hmm. right? So to be anonymous, but you follow your favorite creators. It's mm -hmm. very creative. Um, and and Facebook, not as much. Mm -hmm. You know, this generation, Gen Zs, are not really into Facebook. They're more into mm -hmm. Instagram. So some of that. But that's Snapchat. Yeah. One of my kids started doing that. I, hate, I used to hate because I didn't, I didn't notice, screenshot the picture, and then it just disappears. You right. Like, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, bring back that picture. You know, that's why I know. Quickly screenshot it. Yeah, you do. And that's then, why if it's going to be pictures, I send it through text. And if I want yeah. to stick, I'll send it through text. But my kids really taught me early on. They're like, if you want to be funny or silly, just do a snap. But if you want me to remember something, <laughs> like, don't put somebody's phone number. Don't put somebody's, you know, on there. Disappear. It'll disappear. Like, what do I do? Yeah. Answer my daughter back. On snap, and then I went back to answer it. Like, it's gone. I know. I, know. Like, if you're I didn't get a read like you said. What were you talking about? about? And she's like, I can't remember anyway. Like, okay. no, Just so, text me, okay? It's so true. <laughs> it is so true. So the kids, and that's the thing I say to parents about: we can't do Snapchat. It's the worst app ever. There are parts of it that are not good. But there are parts of it that are mm -hmm. like texting, and that's way a lot. Where the filters on it are fun. Like yeah, also with my granddaughter, I, I love so hard. It's like bunnies or whatever. Oh, filters yeah. Together, oh, some right? of them are so funny. Yeah. I love them. The voice so difference. Great. Yeah. It's, it's so creative mm -hmm. and just so funny. But teaching, like my three year old my three year old granddaughter, that that's a silly face. You know, that's a pretty face, but that's mm -hmm. not my face. That, that does, that's not me. That doesn't look like me. And so you were talking about body dysmorphia mm -hmm. and how teenage oh, all girls. All those filters can make you all look, those filters. Legs look longer. Yeah, and my arms are thinner. I look really good. I don't yeah. look 52. I look 25. <laughs> you know, I'm looking good. And my, son's, like my son's friends are like, look at your mom on this. You know, and, and we have a good laugh. And that's what's fun. I think you need to laugh because... These um, technology tools, social media that we use all the time, they're designed by somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't just uh, appear out of thin air. They are carefully designed where people have gone to school. They've studied. Yeah, you can imagine. They're designing it to yeah. hook so you. Your dad would have done that. Right. Well, he, he was, was actually a problem school. solver if the whole thing went, you know, shut down. Well, he was back in the day. I remember in college, this is going to age me a little bit, but you'd have those silly cars. you do a sentence. Oh, Right. The programming class. Yes, yes. And you if would. you drop them, you're yes, in trouble. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they have to do that too. Code. Yeah, that was those, those days, definitely, for sure. And now coding, yeah. the kids can code. They can make their own games. And I thought that was super fun, too. And, and my um, my middle daughter loved to get in there and kind of God, inspect the page like and mess it up. And so I, I let her. Yeah. I mean, that's part of homeschooling. I'm like, let's see what happens. Not that she was hacking, really, but she was looking behind be on the back end of a web but See, she's so. understanding in far greater depth than mm -hmm. average Person, though. right, right, yeah. and that's kind of what we need to do to educate parents and kids. Now, you were mm -hmm. saying they're wiser, kids are learning faster than their parents can mm -hmm. because parents just simply don't have time, it's not that no. they're smarter. Oh, it's just learning. too much to keep up with. Like, it is, I don't get out on TikTok. I've downloaded lazy. <laughs> I downloaded that app so many times and got rid of it because the songs stick in my head yeah. once again. And it's so fun and it's a time sucker because I'm like, okay, I only spend one hour and then two hours go. It's fine. Yeah. We all struggle. See, I with like it. the reminder on your phone that just pops up and says, oh, your usage is down 25% or it's up, whatever. And then I can think, wow, if I really went on my phone that, that much more. And yeah, you know. and I look and I see. And my husband, Clubhouse is my new social media go to. It's a social audio app. So I love oh, to learn. I've never heard listening. of that. Either. Yeah, and Twitter oh. has it now too. It's uh -huh. just that's kind of how I learn is through listening. Yeah. And then I can write notes if I want to, but I really I love listening. What, what is and Clubhouse? Though? Clubhouse is just a social audio app. So you mm -hmm. hop on it, and there are hall it's a hallway that you get into, and mm -hmm. there are rooms. Titles of topics, friends, topics of anything, and it can be like going to the library. Yeah, kind of. Except the people are talking. Oh, 
Oh, okay. So it's like a conference, actually. Oh. Like you're going to a conference and somebody might be talking about the vaccine that's coming out some, mm -hmm. you know, in real time and you pop in the room and there might be 30 people, oh, could yeah. be a thousand people yeah. and they're talking about Ooh. what's going on with the news or they might be talking about uh, raising kids in a mm -hmm. digital age. You know, I, right. I have a couple clubs in there so you can establish right. a club and, and on, social media. on the app. Uh -huh. oh, okay. you download it. It's just called clubhouse. It's, yeah. Go look into it. If, if you're a, a learner who likes to listen mm -hmm. um, and you want to just check out a new uh, social app, I like mm -hmm. it because it's not distracting. You don't see the pictures. It'd be great when you're driving. Sometimes, yes. You know, like yes. on a road trip. Or yes. Or and so whatever. you can, there are pictures kind of like LinkedIn, you uh -huh. know, have your little headshots. Mm -hmm. So you can see who the people are. Then you can click on their little face and they'll show a bio, like a oh. notes. It's so neat. Um, it's so it's like LinkedIn meets Twitter meets a podcast. A podcast. Yeah, really. that's what I'm thinking. Like, mm -hmm. and, and people podcast on it and they yeah. link it to Facebook. And it's a way, it's linked to have links to Twitter and Instagram oh, okay. as well. And they're, they've been around, they were in beta the first year, the 2019. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. 2020. Wow. April 2020. And so now it's coming up almost two years and it's open. They've added so many new features. I love it. And cool. um, that's, my go, that's my go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there's something for everybody, but teaching the kids, that's what I like teaching the kids how not to just consume it all, mm -hmm. but also to, to produce something mm -hmm. or to connect and to make it better somehow. Mm -hmm. um, complimenting. So something rather than those hateful comments, see if you can yeah. comment positively on the like your grandma told you, you can't say something nice, don't yes. say anything at all. Yes. <laughs> or if that if, little philosophy in the parents <laughs> saying, if you have something to say, say it as if grandma was next to you, right? You know, only look at things on your phone as if your mom was sitting next to you, those type of things. Well, I think sometimes too, people can be braver behind their computer, whether it's emails or make it a comment on social media than if you're sitting next to somebody. W would you say that, I guess that maybe that's a good question. Yeah. Would you say that directly to somebody's face? If you're, you know, sitting here Exactly, and I don't think so. Yeah. And, and that's another thing I say to kids, you know, if you're getting hateful comments from, you know, JB4523, X, X. It's like, who cares? Who, who are you? You know, block them. <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah, block them. Who cares? Um, but kids are sensitive, right? So well, it's yeah. easy for us it's to say. It's you're an adolescent. I mean, you know, oh, you go to school right. and like, oh, I didn't know he sat me at the lunch table today, or, you know, whatever. And or it's a great question so of you. Hanging out with so and so. And, you yeah. know, it's hard, it's hard agents. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I think that that's why it's important to take, to take a moment to explain to your kids when you get home, take a break from the phone, but they want to, they want to catch up, but um, keeping it out of the bedroom, mm -hmm. you know, shutting it down at a certain time for it. So you can have family time. Of course. It's so important. Like time. I used to joke with my son, it's really okay to be alone in your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really all right. Just to sit there and just think. It is. And when they have yeah. nothing to do, I think that's a human thing too. And it was so funny. We, we were just watching Parks and Rec. That was one of our favorite shows. And we were watching and Andy Dwyer is one of the mm -hmm. characters. And he was supposed to be a night security guard. Mm -hmm. And he calls his wife to come and like entertain him because he's going crazy. And she shows up, they sit on a bench and he says, man, it was pretty bad. There was no work for me to do. And I started thinking about, you know, those thoughts, like the, the meaning of life and why we're here. And, you know, really and, deep. And, and kids do that. Those teenagers, it's all those hormones, mm -hmm. all those, what do I do with my energy and my feelings and the contradictions. And my mom said she would always be there and whatever. And now, Ooh, I, I feel com I feel uncomfortable with my mom, you know, wait a minute. And, yeah. and just, you know, everything that's going through a teenager, a teenager's mind like wow am I, am I growing up and I have to take care of myself and you start to feel like oh, it's so much easier to pick up a phone right mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pick up the phone and play Supercell whatever games are on there mm -hmm. um I forget all the names all the names of the games that my son would play but you know Madden yeah. and, and Rocket League and all these games um that distract so you don't have to answer those big questions mm -hmm. in life but you should be thinking about right. that because kids do want purpose why am i here and so many want to emulate what they see on youtube like this person's funny i can do that and so they think well maybe i can have a youtube channel mm -hmm. and i say go for it try it grab a friend a lot yeah. of these kids have nobody's friends. gonna remember there's so much information it. out there that yeah you know 
And it's I just, it's creative. Yeah. And um, parents use it. If it doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. And I think, I think yeah. parents maybe 20 years ago or 10 years ago, yeah, YouTube is like 20 years old, would say, you don't do that. Don't, don't be a YouTuber. That's weird. Go get a real job. But now we see this is a real job. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the right person. Yeah. Yeah. For the right person. And then other jobs are created from it because as this person starts to have its own channel and do well, you need someone to set up the equipment mm -hmm. and, you know, write script and, and all that. So it's creating technology is creating different jobs, mm -hmm. jobs that we, we didn't, Right, know about or, or need. So I think that well, or I heard too that kids is these ages that are like around my son's age that everybody is, has a side gig. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but it's really common to have a side gig yeah. or something where you're being creative, making money, doing something. Really, you can do any, anything yeah. possible these days. Yeah, and the kids are you can do anything that. from everywhere, pretty much. And kids are smart, like you were saying. There's we are in the age of information, and mm -hmm. and to have a computer in your pocket where you can go to any library in the world. You can go read about Wikipedia, right? You can read about anything. Mm -hmm. You're so curious. You can look up and, and oh, everything's at your fingertips. Time. Obviously, you guys are so yeah. lucky. Yeah. All you guys know, mm -hmm. you know, amazing. Yeah. And, and so, if you teach your kids to like capitalize on that information mm -hmm. and not the deterrence, not going down those those streets mm -hmm. on the internet that you don't need to go down. Well, just like in real life, there's certain areas maybe you won't venture into. You should right. be the same on the internet, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so or not do it, do it, not, not do it, not do it. Yeah, but talk about it. So that's my thing yeah. is we really don't talk about it. We're tired, and I think a lot of parents go home and they just want to play mm -hmm. games to unwind, solitaire, or right. candy crush, just to unwind, um, or listen to a podcast. But mm -hmm. we're doing that without talking to our kids, or we're at, saying to our kids, "Okay, go take an hour, play your games," and then like one hour turns into two hours, turns into three hours, and then we're tired. We skip the shower, we skip the routines, just go to bed. Brush your teeth. Yeah. And I'm, I'm speaking from experience, mm -hmm. right? That's my own experience in uh, raising a teenager and having him have an iPhone at 14. Yeah. It takes time again to keep talking about it and letting him know, you know, I'm noticing this for me. Is that happening to you? Yeah. How do you feel? How does your body feel? How, what do you do at night? Because we kept the, the phone out of the bedroom, but I'm a light sleeper and I would, it would be midnight and he went to bed at 10 and I would go downstairs. He's downstairs with yeah. the charger is, but he's on his phone with Snapchat. I'm yeah. like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? This is not part of the agreement. And he would tell me, he'd be like, there's this girl crying mm -hmm. and I feel so bad. And I'm just taking pictures of my forehead. So, it, so she knows I'm there. <laughs> I mean, that. I, I joke yeah. about that. I joke about that. The kids to keep the snap streets, right? Uh -huh. So Snapchat, part of the, the way they keep oh, the you, stories. I mean, um, I just, I'm, I'm it's so actually so like texting, right? Snapchat. If you text it back uh -huh. and forth, they yeah. give you like a little fire, a little emoji that goes, you're on fire with this person. Keep okay. going. And it's like ping pong. Oh. So you can have streets. See, I never do that. Every so I, never day. Get the, I never get the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you get an hour glass, right? You get an hour glass. Uh, your, your connection with this person is nearly dead, you know? So I wouldn't even know what that it's, it is. Like for us, it's silly and funny, but to a teenager who wants to tell this uh, new friend, oh my gosh, I want to keep in touch with you, always like, I can't if we look at it from, yeah, from that kid point of view, an eight-year-old, nine-year-old, mm -hmm. 14, and 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 the later it is, I could talk to my son, like, are, are you doing the straight thing? And he's like, yeah. So he would leave, he would give his account password, or maybe leave his phone, with his friend. So his friend could log in and snap the seven or eight <laughs> friends that he streaks with. So he could keep the fire. You know, it's oh fun. It's a game. Yeah. It's fun. It's I knew. But now he's like, like, no. You know, they grow out of it. Yeah. And then so much effort. Like, like, like tweens, yeah. it creates anxiety for them. Well, kind of. It's like so you're it keeps them coming on. on. It's like something to do. It fills their mind like, oh. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. And I'm like, no, you don't. You really don't. don't. But just tell your friends. I mean, I do snap, you know, streaks. But I'm thinking of you, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll get back to. to so that's kind of glad that I don't have. Well, I have my grandkids, but don't, you know, they're also uh, not just only my responsibility. Yeah, but parents have a lot of pressures these days. They do, and I do. I I do recommend some parents to get on Snapchat if your kid is on it mm -hmm. to use it for texting. Yeah, because that's what the kids like to do. They um. 
they like to use the filters. Which is messaging on Snapchat. Also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Messaging. It's like messaging on yeah. the Snapchat, sending a chat, which mm -hmm. is you can do a video, you can do a, a you know a picture, mm -hmm. and you're just sending it. And it's kind of like what I'm doing. You put on your right. story mm -hmm. the way Instagram is. Um, and it's just something yeah. new, but of course there's magazines. You can swipe and look at all the magazines mm -hmm. and entertaining videos, videos. If you want, I never do because that's not what I want my algorithm to right. give me. I don't. Right. And your phone will just, it does your, your phone. <laughs> or if you shop or something, of course yes. it's like tagging you. And, oh, it is. You know, it's following you around. It's all data and yeah. they all mine your data. Every social media app will mine that data. And some of them send it along to third parties. Mm -hmm. And, and you agree to that when you download an app, we're supposed to read the entire yeah, right. thing. Read that. <laughs> no, but that, you're clicking so fast, get me in, get me in. And then you're having fun with your friends. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's something to talk about as well because that digital footprint mm -hmm. begins the minute you you take a picture of your baby. Mm -hmm. The minute you take a picture of your baby in the delivery room and your baby's face is out there yep. online yep. for anybody to snap, to screen shot, use, manipulate, mm -hmm. Photoshop, their identity is now also online. Yeah. So, okay. so that's just. I also yeah. like that as something else too mm -hmm. is what you take on, um, like I don't have, what, it, what is it? Oh, Alexa, mm -hmm. or is it, what's the other one, Siri, or what's the other one? Yeah, Echo. Echo. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, that just kind of creeps me out a little bit, and I just, um, I don't know. I don't have it either. I don't like <laughs> that in my house. It creeps me up. Because I just like don't yeah. listening like all the time. Not I that know. people go, oh, I have nothing to hide. And I'm like, yeah, but they're still like in your in your, in your home, which is like your domain, your total privacy of your whole life. You know? That's really true, yeah. So and people need yeah. to know that. And some people are okay with it. And ring is another one, you know, oh, having a ring is another one. It's, oh. it's on your phone. Oh. So, so ring is right at your door. So ring is right around your doorknob. Oh so yeah. Somebody rings, who has that. Somebody rings your doorknob. Yeah. It shows the video uh -huh. packages. I always look at the rest of Cause I know they yeah. have it. I think a lot of the technology just creates more anxiety. Mm -hmm. I think. So I think that's, per it's a personal preference. Mm -hmm. Some people love the ease of having, Alexa there and, yeah. and well, I know my grandkids they love it because they'll say you know play music why not right? yeah tell me a joke or, yeah I don't know and I, and I do love Siri I, I, do, yeah. I do ask her <laughs> and I speak well mm -hmm. so she usually gets it right uh -huh. and I'll say thank you and she's like that's what I'm here for <laughs> <laughs> and so it will only get better right yeah. um, so I'm going to use it on my phone but yeah. I don't have like the unit in my house I don't yeah, know I don't I either. just I don't, I don't either. I feel like they're so always different. listening, right? But I mean, same yeah. with. But then they hear that, you know, the camera on your, your laptop. Yeah. You know. So close you your laptop, I guess, right? Yeah. Although my camera doesn't yeah. work on my laptop. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I have another have covered. I actually have it covered when <laughs> I'm not using it. Just, yeah, yeah, extra privacy, right? Where are those cameras? Yeah. But they're going to be all, we're going that way. They'll be everywhere. everywhere. And so in a way, it's kind of good because we're going to have to live with transparency mm -hmm. and we'll be judged by our integrity. Because if we act one way, but then we were at someone else's and we act completely different in somebody else's house and was recorded or played yeah. released, Look, and that's already happening, right? In the news and and files that are found and Big emails. And, oh, it is. <laughs> so you know, there's good and 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 something to think about with yeah, time, just to watch it. And I think the number one thing is just start talking about it with your mm -hmm. kids because the kids don't know. I feel mm -hmm. like saying, don't say that your kids are smarter than you because they're not. They don't have the life experience mm -hmm. that you have. So that's where you are actually ahead of your kids in terms of wisdom yeah. and experience. However, <laughs> the kids, however. <laughs> I, and it's a big however, yeah. the kids will learn the technology faster, faster. And they won't want to admit if you learn something that they didn't know. They don't oh. admit it. So when I got Pandora, I'm like, oh my gosh, Pandora is the best thing. And I downloaded it right away. And I told my two kids that are major music kids, they're like, they didn't want me to find it first, <laughs> right? And I'm like, eh. And then they're, of course, like Spotify. And, I you know, Spotify. They're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so things, you know, Pandora was first and then things came around. Yeah. And so we actually get in that get in that mindset of teaching each other mm -hmm. and, and knowing. And this is something I talk with teachers about a lot too, especially in that between age, um, mm -hmm. middle school, the kids are going to know how to use YouTube. They're going to know how to turn it off. They're going to know how to set it up faster than you. Mm -hmm. Ask for help. 
ask for help. Kids want to help. Oh, yeah. Always so it all goes so much faster to just give up a little mm -hmm. bit of the control of time and don't worry. And if something happens that you didn't plan on, don't freak out. Laugh about it because the kids are laughing. Mm -hmm. um, so teachers, I think we used to take ourselves really uh, seriously mm -hmm. and a lot of responsibility. And the kids just, there's going to be mistakes all over the place. The kids have learned this. And so yeah. I tell teachers. As long as you learn from your mistakes. Yes. It's not the mistakes, but mm -hmm. what you do with the knowledge you learn from. Right. It. And they're so forgiving. Mm -hmm. So if kids are forgiving and kids mess up and they're forgiving of other kids and you just kind of have that mindset, forgive yourself. And that's why I say to parents too and, and moms especially, oh, I let them get this social app and this social app and now she's texting sexting oh gosh to, you know what do i do and and that's something to talk yeah. about i mean you you didn't know what you didn't know but now you've got to talk to your daughter yeah. about that like and there, again she's seeking attention most mm -hmm. of us are seeking attention we want what do you think of this i wouldn't have texted this to you if i didn't want to get your feet and i think right? well what i've some of the stuff i've learned over the last year and a half is like I mean, really, probably the powers that be behind all the internet and social media, they can go in and see everything you've ever done on any, yeah. any device you've typed. It's somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere on some to be found. Server. Yeah. So just think of that before you, you know, oh, exactly. just say, but then again, you figure, how many billions of texts can people monitor? Right, but, um, right. But it's out there. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. You know. And you can control it. Yeah. You can control it. You do have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. A choice. Well, gosh, um, where did the time go? You have been a wealth of information. Oh, thanks. Gosh. It's fun chatting with you. Yeah, appreciate you coming on. Yeah. I hope that um, my viewers, um, well, I don't hope that. I know that they <laughs> have, are going to go away from this with tons of information and hopefully ways to um, keep their kids safe and educate them and, you know, learn to share back and forth with your kids. Yes. Like you learn said, with your kids, learn. Yeah. Like we're all learning every day. Yeah. Things change all the time. Oh yeah. So now are these all the books that you, yeah, these There's, are just some of the books. Um, I can get those on Amazon. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I'd love to just say a couple of titles yeah. because, you know, as a grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to be invested in the next um, generation mm -hmm. and even my own kids and raising them, they were on their phones and, um, here's one by Katherine Steiner Adair, and it's called The Big Disconnect. Um, yeah, she's she's really big in terms of um, protecting kids' minds and keeping parents and kids connected. Um, this is another one by Brad Marshall. It's called The Tech Diet for Your Child and Teen. Very easy to read. Um, great suggestions. There's a seven-step uh, program that he mm -hmm. takes you through to get you ready for kids who are going to be on devices. This teen's guide to social media is another good one. Um, and then this is a fantastic one. Diana Graver. She uh -huh. actually, um, is really an expert in media literacy, mm -hmm. the psychology of using media. Oh, that's and cool. this is called raising humans in a digital world helping yeah. kids build a healthy relationship with technology. And that's and really important. I think. Is incredible. So I would start there and you can, she even has study questions in the back of oh. to do with a parent or two, because we're so alone doing this. We mm -hmm. think we're messing up in our house, but no, the next door neighbor's <laughs> kind of struggling too. Yeah. We all are. Sure, we all. And here's another one, raising a screen smart kid and uh, embrace the good and avoid the bad <laughs> in the digital age. And that's what we need to do. We need to know what the good and the bad is. And let me yeah. tell you, your kids will be the first to tell you what's bad because they'll run into it and they want to tell you, but don't freak out. Yeah. Keep this safe, open environment where you're learning and mm -hmm. something new comes out every day, like you were saying. So this is kind of what I do is I read all this stuff. I research all this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just part of me. And then I, I bring it to parents uh -huh. that I coach. And then on smart digital kids, I, I'm just starting. So when you said, when did you start? Yeah. I mean, we're just like just over a year old and um, I'm trying just now to get more on social media and right. my YouTube channel. I'm not as consistent as I need to be yeah. and, and I will, but yeah, there's been just, you know, life goes mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm really trying to do it in 2022 now to be more consistent. Oh, cool. Well, now how yeah. do people, how do parents get in touch with you? I've met you on LinkedIn. You know, yes. if they want to uh, contact you for coaching or sure. advice or whatever. Yeah, I'm on Instagram. I try to hunt. That's my platform I'm trying to get on mm -hmm. once a day. I try to post. And I have a Calendly link on uh -huh. Instagram in my bio. Um, and I have two accounts, like, on every social media platform. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Clubhouse. I'm on Clubhouse. And you do get that social uh, media app. 
Um, you, there's Calendly links there. And then www.smartdigitalkids.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read a little bit about what I do yeah. there and the coaching packages. And uh, yeah, I, I, I love it. I love yeah. working with parents because even though they're overwhelmed and they're mm -hmm. nervous and they're afraid, the minute we talk about it, and the minute mm -hmm. I talk with them, they realize, wow, I guess I have more control than I thought. Yeah. You know, it's not the technology and your kid and what you do and the tech is hurting your kid and your kid is doing. Right. No, your kid's not bad. And the technology is not a, a crazy person going to hurt your kid. It's kind of both. And I think yeah. like in terms of communication, the family, the parent, the mm -hmm. kid, the tech, and that's why taming the tech is just really what I talk a lot about. And uh, tame is actually an acronym uh -huh. for talking, asking, modeling, and explaining. Mm -hmm. So when I say tame your tech, we talked a little bit about control. Uh -huh. And um, is it like know, healthy boundaries? Can I talk about healthy yes. boundaries with people maybe that aren't quite so good for you, what have you? So is it kind of the same perspective with um, technology? Like you do have to have healthy boundaries. Like if you're on your phone, Eight hours a day, that's probably a problem. Well, I'm on I mean, seven hours. <laughs> I'm on it seven hours a day. No, I'm talking like consistently. Like consistently. Like, so where are you playing? Where you're spending yeah. your where yeah. you're spending your seven hours is a big deal. Right. So whether you're just playing games the whole time mm -hmm. or you're actually doing work. And screen mm -hmm. time will tell you that. You can break it down. Oh, okay. Uh, screen time. So you know, go look at screen time if you have an iPhone and and even Google has one too, mm -hmm. Google Fun. So just find out where you're spending your time and it will be yeah. really enlightening. So I think mine's just basic usage, but I can go in there and break it. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's kind of scary. Like, it knows what I know. And where? where? So, so I, I said, and I say to my husband for accountability, you know, oh, I was on Clubhouse four hours and I was yeah. on Instagram 11. Yeah, for, for the week, for yeah. the week, <laughs> for the week. So you break down daily or weekly. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great, and like, yeah, like I always say to parents, you know, find someone next door or at your mm -hmm. church or a family member to hold you accountable yeah. for what you're doing online, where you're going, and how long you're there because of that balance. So we're mm -hmm. living in an online world. And and we're living in an offline world. Right. And we want our kids to do both. And yeah. so communication is kind of the program, the team, your mm -hmm. tech is it's about communication. It's not about using tech less mm -hmm. so much so as intentionally. Right. Intentionally, responsibly, creatively, not to just mindlessly consume and just numb yourself yeah. out. I mean, which we can't, we all do, and that's okay. That's why yeah. yeah. we're watching movies, we're doing yeah. YouTube for three hours. But then we know we're tired and we have to come off that online world, which is really here. Well, they say here. it disrupts your sleep. Actually, yeah. I've read where you shouldn't even be on like your devices at all, like an hour or two before bed. Right. Because it, it, it triggers your mind becomes mm -hmm. more active. Like, like drinking a bunch of caffeine or something. Yes. Before and bed. your mind still has to calm down and mm -hmm. slow down and process the images that uh -huh. and sounds that you saw. Or just even like sure. my grandkids just doing hands-on creative play, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, or reading a book. Right. Reading, reading a text. Just something, book. right, where it doesn't have, your whole life doesn't have to be in that device. Right. It, it yeah. shouldn't, and it shouldn't, right, for sure. Or be out playing sports, whatever. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, yeah. gosh, thank you so much. Oh, for thank you. It's been so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. All right. Well, we'll uh, shut down for now. And um, if you want to reach out to uh, Beverly, she gave you all the ways to get in touch yeah. with her. All right. Thank you.